So, you finished your first Miss Marble. How's it gone? Well, I think all right. I don't know. I feel a bit brain dead, really. It's all happened so quickly, and um, you know, it's been it's been quite hard to uh, to get au fait with it. I think I'm just beginning to enjoy it, and of course, it's finished now. And um, was it difficult to sort of take on this role? Because I mean, a lot of people have done it before you. I mean, how do you make it your own? Well, I I don't know. Except you have to play it off your own persona, I suppose. Um, there's so many ways uh, to play Marple, and so many people have played it so many different ways. And everyone has their own idea of Marple. So I'm sure I won't please everyone. I just hope I please enough. But just seeing you this morning, you've got a warmth that other Marples haven't had. Well, you said that. I didn't say that. <laughs> So, how, so what is this Miss Marple like? How have you gone about it? Is she more traditional? Um, I think she's a very nice, very well uh, sort of reserved, uh, perhaps a little shy person who lives in a small village. But she has a very, very keen sense of what's right and wrong. She feels that wickedness must be punished. And so when she takes off on these the trail, the track of, of the murderer, uh, I think that's when she gets the wind in her sails and, and then we see the true essence of her. What people don't realise is that there are an awful lot of planes that go overhead round here. An awful lot to deal with here. We filmed Cranford here in the summer and uh, they were just circling and circling and then it was very rainy as well. Now here it's just very cold and what you probably can't see down there, I hope, is I've got um, thermal bloomers on and um, I'm holding a hot water bottle so I'm well looked after. Miss Marple wears thermals? Well, this one does. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the crew here? It seems to be very much a family. Oh, they're all right. They're all right. I think I'll get on with them. I've got them for the next four anyway, so... Uh. So you just finished this one, A Pocket Full of Rye. Yes. Can you tell us a bit of what it's about? Uh, it's quite a famous one, this one. Um, it's uh, about um, the murder of, in fact, Miss Marple's maid, Gladys, who's a simple but lovely soul and goes away and, and is exploited and finally murdered. Um, and um, I have to leave you to buy the book and, and read the rest of it. And uh, there's something about Agatha Christie. I mean, she was so prolific, but it's enduring. Absolutely. And, of course, Poirot is her main person, and she wrote a lot about, uh, a lot about Poirot. And I think uh, Miss Marple came later in life for her. I, I think she's a bit of an offspin of Agatha Christie herself, who was, um, had very strong ideas about justice and capital punishment. Because, of, of course, at the time that all this was taking place, it was capital punishment. So you knew that when you brought the murderer home, he was going to hang. Mm. And that's, that's uh, something to, be, to deal with, I think, uh, in, you know, for Marple to think about quite seriously. Do you feel there's a huge weight on your shoulders? Or you, after wrapping this first film, do you feel more relaxed and confident? Um, I don't know. If I think about the enormity of it all, I, I'd never be able to do it, to be honest. I have to... It's, it's like being in a, in a sort of film in my head. I don't know. I'm, I don't really feel that I'm here, or that I'm talking to you, or that I've done the, I've done the series. You know, when, I, when I got the news that I'd got the part, I was on holiday in New Zealand. And um, that was only on about the 15th of February. And, and what are we now, the 1st, 2nd of April? And um, it really hasn't sunk in. It's a hell of a shock. And, and this is very different from the other roles you've played that we know you from. Yes, I suppose so. Um, well, I've done uh, probably more stage work than most people know about. And so I think I may have touched on something near this character. At least I think, it, I think it's a bit near some of the characters I've played before. We remember you as uh, Mrs. Love in Sweeney Todd. What do you think about the Johnny Depp film? Oh, well, I can't, I can't think about that, can I? I'm just too old to have played Mrs. Lovett against Johnny Depp, so I have to put it that way. Uh, I'm sure it's wonderful. I hear it's wonderful. I've yet to catch up with it. And many of our viewers fondly remember you in Fresh Fields and then French Fields. Yes, well, that was a big part of my life with my dear friend Anton Rogers, who's recently died, um, which has been quite a lot to deal with. And... Uh, you know, he was such a charming, wonderful chap. And we've known each other for years. And, we, and my husband and I are godparents to his middle son. And he also bred uh, a dog that he gave us. Um, so we, we were very close. When I've been saying, oh, I'm going to come meet Julia McKenzie, you know, she's the new Miss Marple. Everyone goes, oh, that'll be lovely. That's nice. You've got such a warmth, such affection. Uh, the viewers that watch you, they just hold you with such high esteem. Well, that's very, very sweet of you. Um, I, I must say I've had the most marvellous support from friends and from viewers already. And um, I just would like publicly to say thank you to all of them. It means a great deal. And just 
all about an all-star cast. The wonderful thing about Marbles, you work with these wonderful actors like Brunella Scales. I know, I know. Brunella's just wonderful. I mean, I've, I've been a fan of hers for years and to think she's in it is fantastic. Wendy Richard yesterday, seeing her as you've not seen her before. Um, I mean, amazing. And, and Matthew McFadden playing the inspector. I felt instant chemistry with him. He's, uh, he, he's terrific. You, one of your lines was, it looked a bit like Errol Flynn. Yes, I know. It's lovely, isn't it? Cheeky of an old lady to say to him, you really remind me, you've got a look of old, of young Errol Flynn. <laughs> you can get away with so much, can't you? Well, you can, you know, I and mean, she does it in order to get further in with him, of course, but um, I think, you know, she does, she'd do anything to get to get to the bottom of crime, so I think you have to forgive her if sometimes she she um, stretches the truth a little bit. And the other thing about playing Marple is visiting these wonderful National Trust properties. It is fantastic, isn't it? It's absolutely wonderful, beautiful places, and um, I said to the producer the other day, well, it's all right for Poirot. He goes up the Nile. I said, all I do is swan around Buckinghamshire. She said, ah, oh, next year we may be going abroad. So um, I'm hopeful that we might. But we love you in Buckinghamshire. Oh, and you also you. went to Berkshire and Englefield House. Englefield House is superb, isn't it? Absolutely superb. And in such good condition. I mean, a lot of these old houses, I'm not saying this one because I haven't seen all over this one, but a lot of them are, are, are not in such great nick, but um, Englefield House is in wonderful condition. You have to go in the autumn time because the leaves are fantastic. Are they? Yeah, they I are. haven't been, but I will, I will go now. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And um, look forward to the next one. Well, I'm, well, I certainly am looking forward to it. Um, thank you very much.